Real quick, before we get started today, I want to let you know about a comfy new shirt that's available in my shop. This is seriously the softest material I've ever worn. It's flowy in the midsection, and it's fitted in the sleeves. Perfect for lounging, sleeping, running errands or cleaning house, and especially days when you actually get to crochet all day. It's currently available in five different colors, size small through 2XL. If you want to get one, visit the link in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's get on to the video. I needed a quick win project this week, so I whipped up a few of these coasters for my desk. We can all use a quick win right now, right? The step-by-step -step tutorial is coming up. All right, first things first, chain four and join with a slip stitch to form a ring. Then chain 11. When you have those 11 chains, turn it over so you can see the back side of the chain and locate that little bump. I find that when you work your stitches in the back bump, although it's a little more difficult to work into that part of the chain, it looks a lot neater and it's gonna help us at the very end of this project. But find that back bump on this second chain and make a slip stitch there. And that's the repeat for this row. We're gonna make one slip stitch in the back bump of the remaining nine chains. Now, one little tip here is to make your slip stitches as loose as possible so you don't have any trouble working into them later. So when you reach the end of the chain, slip stitch in the center of the ring. Now it sort of looks like we're crocheting in the round here, but we're not really. We're working in rows and we're sort of using this as a center point. So to start off on the next row, row number two, chain one and turn the work. So you're just flipping it over so you can continue to work in rows. Now for this pattern, there's a two row repeat. Believe it or not, it looks way more complicated than it actually is. We have a row with a variety of stitches, which is what we're gonna start working on in just a moment. And then we have a row of slip stitches. So keep that in mind as we continue on with row number two. So we need to find the first stitch of this row. And it can get a little bit confusing with the slip stitch that you made in the center to sort of secure that there and the chain. They all kind of look the same right now. So it almost looks like you're skipping a couple stitches, but you're really not. You're technically working in the last slip stitch you made on the previous row. Okay, so keep that in mind and make a half double crochet in the back loop only of that stitch. Then make one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. followed by two double crochets in the next stitch. One double crochet in the next two stitches. followed by two treble crochets in the next stitch. Then one treble crochet in the last three stitches. Then you'll chain one and turn. 
So that's the first row repeat, and you'll use that stitch combination throughout, so go ahead and memorize that. Loosely slip stitch in the back loop only of the next 12 stitches. Again, make sure you're, you're making your slip stitches as loose as possible without making them you know, look funny, without the tension looking all wonky and weird. You wanna be able to work in those stitches later. If you're having trouble working into a slip stitch, that's your cue that you need to make them a little more loose and it should be a little easier for you. When you finish that, you'll slip stitch in the center of the ring So the repeat once again is row two and row three to build around this center point. But after that first section, the end of the second row looks a little bit different because this is our first little section. So let's keep going. You'll chain one, turn your work, half double crochet in the back loop of the first stitch, one double crochet in the back loop of the next two stitches. Two double crochet in the back loop of the next. One double crochet in the back loop of the next two. two treble crochet in the back loop of the next, and one treble crochet in the back loop of the next three. That's the same. Now from here on out, when you get to the end of that stitch combination, you'll have two stitches remaining. They leave little points on the end and you should leave them unworked. To finish your coaster, continue on with your repeat. Again, you'll start off on row three now because we just finished row two, then start all over again, row two, row three, and keep going until you have 14 sections. You'll end on a second row. So you'll finish that 14th section you won't turn to do your slip stitch row after that last one. So after you finish all of that, this is what your coaster will look like at that point. We'll use the last row to stitch the first and the last section together. To maintain our pattern, we need to slip stitch in the back loop of the first three stitches. Then insert your hook into the next stitch, catching both loops. And then on your first section, find that last chain and insert your hook into that chain as well. Then yarn over and pull through the chain, the stitch, and the loop on your hook, slip stitching them together. Then you'll just repeat that for each remaining stitch. When you finish that, fasten off and weave in your ends. Now one thing to keep note is the little points might point up a little bit at first, but honestly mine stopped doing that after using them a few times. Or another thing you could do is block them to help with that too. That's all for now, friend. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this quick little project. And if you haven't subscribed already, please, please consider doing so. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out tremendously. I really do appreciate it. 
Happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one.